This is the Everyday Hustle Show, where our number one priority is self-development. Each week, we will dive into insightful topics that encourage you to push your thinking beyond average. Smash that subscribe button and tune in every Sunday at 6 p.m. Welcome. Welcome to my new backyard. Welcome. Finally, everybody's here for the 80th official recorded episode of the Everyday Hustle Show. We would like to welcome you. Welcome, welcome, welcome from the bottom of our hearts. Welcome. If you're here, that means you're trying to get ahead in life. Freak yeah. And we want to applaud you. If you're here, that means you're trying to listen to three dudes who don't know what the beep is going on. You know what I'm saying, boys? (laughs) Damn, 80 episodes, dude. So what is that? I mean, we missed a couple of weeks, you know, throughout the two years, but that's Are like... Are we ever going to get a, um, a freaking, like, sponsor who's going to, like, pay us? Yeah, dude, yeah. we got a sponsor, bro. Come on, bro. How you going to do D-Square Media like that, bro? <laughs> no, I mean, like, somebody who's going to, like, hey, if you're out there and you want to sponsor the podcast... Hey, there we go. Shout out to your boys, us, at the Go ahead and drop an email. Yo, if you, you comment on Instagram If you're listening, you're a small business, you got product or you do something... Legit, hit your boys up, sponsor us, sponsor uh, the cast, up and coming cast, even though we've been doing it for two years, but up and coming. Two years. Hey, man, it takes time, bro. Not yet, a year and a half, dude. Yeah, Get like, your a, fucking like a year and a half. Well, okay, so we started December of 2017, yeah, so December yeah. 2018, so coming up on two years in December. My dog's going to run into the, oh, she didn't nah, run into she the stopped. Screen. Where are we right now, Chris? Yo, we're at the new the new pad, bro. Your new freaking digs. The new digs. Jesse's new house. It's uh It's our first time here. Drew's recording some some footage. Yeah, man, I like this spot, freaking bro. Freaking beautiful, dude. So you redid all everything, right? We redid everything except for the floors and three quarters of the house. And nothing really structural, obviously. The house was structurally done but yeah we had to remove the popcorn ceiling Ooh, that's fun shout out to freaking helene's uh mom did you guys wet husband it? Dwayne. yeah they they're freaking luckily pump spray it n- luckily they have a they own painting company oh really so like uh, without them i mean yeah. i could have i could have gotten through most of it but it would have been so much more difficult a lot of youtube they came in like you know they fucking covered the house in plastic like a dexter kill room and then uh, with hot water, you know, sprayed the fucking yeah. ceilings down, let it soak in a bit, and that shit just came right yeah. off, scraped right a little, off like little butter. tool, a little yeah, scraper they, tool. And they brought every fucking thing, dude. They had all the tools and everything we needed. Yeah. And I, uh, yeah, they fucking. I took a week off of work. They spent a lot of their time here, you know, when they could have been somewhere else making money. Mm-hmm. They fucking killed it, helped us out, and then. Uh, once we got through the first week of that, the next week Helena's ma or Helena's dad came down and he helped us do the backsplash and the tile in the kitchen and uh, the flooring in the bedroom. Both of them look beauteous. Yeah, I just know about the popcorn ceiling because I had to do that. I helped out um, Kelly's brother at their house and they had popcorn ceiling. But he, yo, he, I mean. It was like one of those things where, you know, he pulled one thing down. He's like, oh, man, this is kind of fucked up. And then it led to another thing, led to another thing. Dude, this dude literally, like, redid his entire his entire uh, place. Electrical, plumbing, like, dude. Hey, Ivy. <laughs> She's <laughs> trying to go through the screen. Hey, talk about Open structural damage right here, man. Ivy's. Dog's trying to break through the screen door. Ivy's doing some damage. I have to put a dog door in for you, huh? But yeah, no, that's how it is, dude. Because then we started looking, and mm-hmm. after we after we got the the walls all patched up and the the kitchen like for some reason they when they did like the mud on the walls they s- textured it like outdoor stucco like there was these really big like fucking trowel lines in it and it looked really ugly mm. so we had to fucking knock all that down and smooth the walls it was like a process but once we got that on started painting we started looking at all these old outlets or like yellowish color mm-hmm. and gross i'm like fuck man i need to replace all the light switches and outlets yeah. and that turned line. into a fucking huge thing once you start doing one i'm like 
I gotta do all of them. And then I'm like, man, every fucking one of these old ass lights and fans in this house need to fucking go. Like, replaced every fucking light fixture, ceiling fan, put all fucking LEDs, dude. I'm actually, I take a lot of pride in all the electrical and lighting stuff I did here because I did all that stuff myself and I was like teaching myself how to do it you as too? I went. No, I just like tried and it worked <laughs> out. Obviously, with the electrical shit, I was I played it safe. I did shock myself a couple times, <laughs> two times. One time was like really scary. It burned a fucking yeah. hole through the metal in my cutters. Yeah, see, I don't fuck with electrical. Like I fucking went, it went poof, and like poof, put like a black mark on the fucking wall, no, no, and no, like no. it literally burned a hole like that big right through the metal on my fucking cutters. I was like, holy fuck, dude! Nah, I'll watch I was videos. holding the rubber handle, luckily. I watch videos. I'll, I'll call people. I, I I've been stung a couple times. I did have way. we did have. A, I paid like I tipped an electrical guy like fifty bucks to come yeah. out here for ten minutes and just like Show there was you. one thing when I hit a couple uh, outlets in the one room. You know, most of them had like four wires and it was pretty simple. But then the ones that outlets that you can control off light switches. Yeah, there's like five wires and you got to break a tab off on the one side. And I was like, like what the fuck? Yeah. yeah, yeah. So I had him come in and explain how all that worked to me. Right, right, right. So that I got. And then once I felt like comfortable with it, I just like tipped him fifty bucks and I. So that that myself. comes off of the the fan, right? The wire, those wires are coming directly from the fan. All well, usually I found out that most of the wires they run to all throughout the house to either a light switch box or uh an outlet box has an extra wire mm. so there's like a hot a neutral right, right and right. a ground and an extra wire which is like a control wire so light switches don't have any neutral going to them only okay. hot lines connect to them and ground okay and then the outlets you have the hot neutral, neutral ground right 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 and then there's a control if there's a control plugged into a switch somewhere too that will work you know like you could have a you know like a lamp plugged into a an upper outlet and when you hit a light switch it'll turn that outlet on or off but then i even put in like on all the switches i put in the kind of switches that when the lights are off they glow the ones that control lights so when it's dark in the oh, house the switches yeah, glow yeah. on the wall so you that can see where you can see what'll turn a light on in the dark Wow. I went all out, dude. I really did. Pull out all the stops. Yeah, see, whoever did the <clears throat> outlets in my place, they literally put every single one of them upside down. Uh, I have no <laughs> clue. I put a couple dimmers upside down, and then Helena's mom looked at me really stupid until I turned them right, but right side up. Yeah, they must have been like a couple of them upside down. They were like, you know what? You mean like the single prongs on the top and the yeah. two prongs on the... Yeah. What? Like, the s- like, what the... Yeah, it, whoever did it, whoever did the con- the construction there probably wasn't uh, the most legit. Electrical scary, dude. Oh, yeah, that's what I'm saying. I've been stung by 120. Yet maybe. Not even necessarily stung. So even if you've hooked something up correctly, then I was like sitting in my house like, wait a minute. Well, first I was let, like, there were some other people that were helping me. Her brother, you know, Helena's brother did a couple outlets. Yeah. And I was like, you know, obviously I'm grateful for the help. But then I was like, wait a minute. Maybe I should have people help me with anything but electrical who aren't electricians. Because if this house were to burn down, yeah, I would forever resent anyone who touched the electrical. But if it was my fault, I was going to say, how do you how do you know? House, yeah, but how would I'm you like, know? Okay, I fucked up. I burned right. my own house down. You know? Yeah. I don't know. It doesn't really make it, much it sense. It wouldn't make. I'd any be difference. pissed. Yeah, you either did. way. <laughs> but I was like, lost everything. Uh, yeah. But I think I did a pretty good job. No well, fires. I mean, it's it's up. You know, the house is up. So a lot of work to do. Yeah. You know, little stuff. I mean, we're here. The other place, uh, Helena closes on the other house tomorrow. And uh, now I just gotta. We gotta get some more furniture, dude. We gotta keep making it our own. But it's uh, it's beautiful. It's a chill little outdoor. beauteous neighborhood's beautiful, dude. There's bike trails all around this bitch. Paved bike trails, dude. Ivy fucking loves it. She feels like she's in a park 24-7. Where is that bitch? Calm down, dude. She's laying right behind you. Oh, she's back there sleeping. 
What do you got to say, Joe? What a week, fellas. You had a long day? No. Every day is blessed day, my brother. It is. Work was very stressful today. Yeah. Yeah, I've been making making a lot of videos and 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 like really finding new tricks and like it's that's fun when you just do shit that like you want to do, you know. Yeah. You know, it is like not something that somebody pays you for. Even like even if like you know you're passionate about something like you know anything anything that you're passionate about you know when somebody's paying you to do it it's always kind of like you know you want to do it like how they want you to do it and you don't really want to like you know tell them hey you should do it this way because this is the best way i guess that's like kind of challenging when you have like a creative position you know and the client's paying for the work but you know it's always like it might look a little bit better this way so it's kind of hard to explain it to them you know it's just like kind of in the in the uh in the juice business you know people people don't understand the difference between like the f- freshly made juice and like the juice made in the cold press they think like just because it's made fresh that it's better you know and like oh man like today this lady she just wouldn't she just wouldn't let go and i was just like i was i was just like, i'm like so close to just sometimes just telling people like Fuck off! Exactly, dude. But then I, I, I like I'm, I'm like I'm good at at like certain things in that aspect where it's like I play the tape out all the way to the end. I picture the, I think about what I'm gonna say before I'm gonna say, it, and then I picture the end of the interaction. Well, not the end of the interaction. What could happen days after? You know, I'm like, oh, this this lady will fucking go on Yelp and she'll fucking ruin me, you know, because I told her to some fucking dumb shit. So. Yes, you will. Yeah, but I've been having fun, dude. I've been I've been posting some some videos and shit, and you know I just filming some stuff now. I'm gonna put out some just gotta put out some new videos for the for the podcast, man. It's been a while. You just got back from Jersey too last week, huh? Yeah, it's a good time. Yeah, Chris and I talked about that last week. When you oh yeah, you know what? Who knows what you were doing last week? You were just I actually uh, on Facebook. I came across like the post of last week's episode. And I let it play for like a couple minutes before my phone rang at work, and it was like you're like Jesse, how you doing tonight? <laughs> and then it was a sound like oh, yeah, you're not here, piece of shit. You liked it or no? Yeah, it was good. Did you give us a share or a comment or anything? Um, no. Wow. He just kept it moving, huh? Yeah, I mean, work is very hectic, dude. Yeah, dude, I'm fucking. I sweat, dude. I stay sweating. Chris, where the fuck are you going? Going to freaking Cali, bro. L.A. Yeah, so by the time people hear this episode, I'll already be back. But it is Seriously? currently... Sunday? Yeah. Yeah, I'm just going for the weekend. That's a long-ass flight. Yeah, dude. I mean, it's not bad. Where you, are, do you have a layover? Yeah, well, I'm, I'm, going, I'm going tomorrow. I have a layover. <clears throat> How did you just say tomorrow? Tomorrow. Did you hear that too? Like, so like tomorrow. I don't know. I wasn't right, paying tomorrow. That let, me, let me try it again. I'm going mañana. How's that? Bueno. Me voy a ir mañana a California. Atrás para ver mi familia. Me gusta la panga. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I leave tomorrow. It's like an hour layover in Houston. So I'll be out there, you know what I'm saying, trapping in the trill. You, ain't you know what I'm saying? Houston, you know what I'm saying? Trill, you know, you got to you gotta keep it. You going to meet T.I. out there? Nah, T.I. is uh, T. Atlanta. In Atlanta. Yeah, yeah, Atlanta. Nah, Houston. Where, do you, where are you going to California for? I'm going for Sound and Fury. So it's a big f- hardcore festival. Uh, it's like two days. Where are you staying? More with my grandma. Okay. Yeah, she lives. So you family and going to a hardcore show. Yeah, luckily that's the only reason why I went because it was man, like the blessings, tw- my brother. It was like twenty five minutes from my grandma's. Hey, my blessings, my brother. Yeah, man. So I'll be able to see my, my I'm gonna be able to see my dad on Saturday. Papa. Papa. So I'm gonna see my dad, my grandma. Faja. And uh, yeah, so it'll be cool, man. It'll be cool. So I put a post up today. You know, it's interesting. Sometimes with social media and shit. I'm just like, I get frustrated because 
I like put out this, you know, photos or videos or whatever it is. That's just like so crispy and like, you know, you'll hit like 30 likes and I'm just like, yeah, that's kind of fucked up, you know, but I did a post today. I don't know if y'all seen it, but a li- the little bit of a heartfelt message behind a picture of myself talking about sacrifice and, um, you know, it gets a lot of interaction with people because it kind of, you know, it like resonates with people, you know, when you get vulnerable and you tell people, you know, where you're at and shit. Right. So that's kind of just how I've been feeling recently. So that's what I want to talk about tonight with you guys is like, you know, certain situations in your life when you had to let things go to move forward, you know, and um, put either put someone else's needs before yourself or, you know, whether it was at work or in your personal life. Um, I feel like everybody has that one point in time in their life where they had to, you know, give some stuff up to, to move forward. So um, just for me, you know, recently uh, with doing the with starting the business, like pretty much my my personal life has like taken um taken the the what do I, how do i want to say this taking the like the hit i guess like the wrath yeah. feeling the wrath of of what i'm doing and like we did the 4th of july and the fireworks and dude i just had so much fun you know and yeah. i was like holy shit like i had like a i had like a realization that like i need that stuff in my life mm-hmm. to maintain the balance you know, social friends, connections, and like going going to um, hang with you guys for the fireworks and shit for the Fourth of July. And Jesse, it was good to see you there. Um, <laughs> just kidding, he didn't show up. Um, but it was so good to see everyone and just to connect with friends and just talk and just disconnect from everything. And yeah. I was like, I like. So on one end, one hand, I'm thinking like you have to give some of that stuff up to get forward to move forward in your life and success and your job, whatever it is. Sometimes like you got, you have to work late Christian cause you change, change positions mm-hmm. or, or, or they moved you sideways or whatever it is. And now I'm sure there are certain things that you were doing at night that now you can't do. Um, for me, like, you know, personal stuff, and then also like material stuff, you know, I had to sacrifice. Um, I, I sold, pr- I'm pretty much like selling all my, my jet ski stuff and parts like to pay bills and to, to, uh, survive and stay afloat while I, um, while I run the business, you know? And, um, so like the materials things and the fun things and then not being able to go out socially with friends and all that stuff. It just like really kind of like, you know, it takes a toll on you after a while, you know, it's been, it's been nine months of, of operation, um, in the, in the inside of the business. Um, and it just, you know, I, I put that post out there and you get a lot of response and a lot of feedback and it's just like, you know, a lot of people can identify and they can, rec- they, they, they feel you m- with that type of stuff. So it's like, I don't know. I just want to, I know there's gotta be something in your life where you had to, um, you know, give something up to move forward. And I, I want to hear what you guys, what you guys have. Yeah. I mean, what I can think of, uh, like the, the major one for me was, uh, there's a couple, couple big things but the biggest one like that started the whole thing was getting clean, obviously, you know, it's you and it, I mean, it wasn't really given up much because I mean, I was like literally at the end of the road. I mean, I was I I had no clue what to uh, what to do next. And, you know, I had just left the highest paid paying job that I had, which was uh, the oil field in Texas. And um, so I was getting paid a lot of money and I, you know, it, that was it. I was just working. So. So yeah, so that was that was a big thing, man. I, you know, giving up uh, in terms of just like what I had at the time was pretty much uh, just trying something new. So I came out here. I didn't know anybody. You know that that whole that whole spiel. And uh, the next big thing would probably be, you know, when I met Kelly. You know, because I was super um, uh, selfish and and I didn't really like. Man, I was just happy that I you know, I made it past 21. I was like, I wasn't saving for, I had nothing in my savings account. I was, you know, buying whatever I wanted. Not that I was making a lot, but you know what I'm saying? I was just selfish. And so, yeah, meeting, you know, when I finally was in a relationship and, and that's what, you know, not forced me, but made me think about my, you know, what I needed to do. And and that's when I went to school and, you know, sacrifice more time and, and, and taking that whole route. So, yeah, man, I, I think sacrifice is, is a good topic because it's it is important. It is something that that needs to be done, and eventually you'll you know I don't want to say you'll find balance because it's, that's kind of a tough. I feel like that's always going to be a struggle, but um, but yeah, man, s- sacrifice is, is a 
is is vital and important i think to to grow but i think it, it's just like you said it's important to remember that you need to to keep that social and that um personal life somewhat at least you know one you know give one day to you know date night or, or little things like that to kind of remind whatever is lacking that it's still important for sure dude yeah those are like two really really good things i think that the first one, you know, getting clean that we all can identify with because you feel like your life is going to end when that happens, but it really just begins, you know, and if anyone out there is struggling, just know that there's a way out and you can, you know, reach out to any of us, you know, individually if you need um, advice on that. But yeah, and then relationships, it kind of sounds bad when you say it like that, like relationships take sacrifice, but that's just, that's just the reality of it. And that, that is the truth. Um, and it's not, it's not like sacrifice in a bad way that's like that's like you're giving part of yourself up for to become one with someone else almost you know um i mean fuck we're all fucking holy shit pretty much (laughs) dude we're all fucking like yeah dude like we're all we all are 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 loyal and and faithful and that's like that takes a lot of sacrifice but in a good way like I, i wouldn't want anyone to think that we mean that in a bad way because you get you give up a little bit but you get so much more you know there's so many good things that come from being in a being in a committed relationship whether it's you know boyfriend girlfriend or marriage or whatever it is and those are two really good ones bro good good stuff christian let's see my two are like exactly the same as two no 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 can't do that can't do that they are dude can't do that all right well then tell us tell us your experience with the with the two like what what with, uh, like you said, you feel like in addiction sometimes when you really have to take that leap, like you, uh, I felt like, yeah, like my life was sort of ending to a degree because not that I was having that great of a time anymore in ad- addiction, but like leaving Pennsylvania, you know, like I had, I had my own house there that I had had for like four or five years, like three bedroom fucking house um that you know i put a lot of work into with my dad and like that was like shitty to have to like leave that and then it took what three and a half years to actually of moving around like every couple of months down here to finally now get my own place again like that wasn't an apartment so that i mean it it worked out and it's much better and uh it was a good thing, but at the time, it felt like I was fucking losing something. And also, same thing with the job. I, I, like, left, you know, on good terms, but, like, left a job up there to come down here to pursue a different lifestyle. But it was a, it was a strange transition, but it's all, you know, everything that I left up there, including, like, close well damaged but close relationships with friends and family have all uh the ones that are really that meaningful are much better now everything that i was worried about leaving has has fucking grown into something better now better job yeah i love this fucking house I yeah the hindsight is relationships is crazy. are fucking yeah beautiful blossom yeah, it's so funny those people that you're like oh my god i can't leave and it's like now you look back and you're like i don't talk to that person i could not yeah really, i mean like my sister I my, with without my mom with and dad yeah, and, and, and like you know my cousin and, and like family yeah you know, i really and then anytime you go and you see the family it's always hard to to go and then see them and then leave again because yeah, every every time I go like back to see my family, well, I guess you know, a little context when I go to New Jersey where I grew up, it's like I always like I was like, man, like I want to move back here, you know. And then I stay there for like four days, and I'm like, oh, like get me back to Florida, you know, like. Yeah, yeah I feel the same way too. Yeah, I love the house, the house thing too, because though you talked about like sacrificing the house and the job and stuff like that, which are, are all material things, and and yeah. um, it's it's challenging to let go of the grip you have on those things, you know, when you're in the midst of it, but it's like, it's always, there's always so much more waiting, you know? 
Yeah, it really I was. Mean, sheesh, yeah, look at your was... fucking your life now, dude, and where we're sitting right now. It's cool. I'm glad we got together and got here. It's like a it's like a milestone, like a monument type thing, you know, like um for us to be sitting here, you know, on your back porch of your house that you that you closed on a, a week or so ago and you and your fiance completely renovated the whole place and you know, um it's just amazing. It's just it's very, very, it's very uh, sexual, dude. Yeah, very sexual, very inspiring. You know, because um, people think that stuff like that's it's not possible. You know. Yeah. You know, I was also gonna say the same thing with the the relationships. Um, like not, it, but I I thought the exact same thing. Like I don't. It's not at all in a bad way, and it does sort of uh, come off that way. But no, it's you sacrifice. Um, more like selfishness, you know, like I was always very fucking selfish and really focused a hundred percent on, on what, what I wanted and what I needed and, you know, what it took to get those things done or accomplished on a daily basis. But now it's not, you know, obviously I, my whole mindset is like, you know, what do I need to do for us? You know, as far, even with, with, uh, work and, you know, career like i need to stay focused because we need this you know like this you know i'm trying to like build a life for us and possibly most likely our future family now we're talking um my little baby girl ivy back here behind me that little future slut dog (laughs) current slut dog dog's such a whore dude (laughs) she fucking loves male cock but anyways (laughs) Not so yeah. selfish these days. I mean, I am, but not <laughs> as bad. I mean, I am, but yeah, not but too bad. yeah, man, it's all good, man. Just as long as you keep that, uh, you know, the motives in check and shit. You know, it's yeah. I mean, I, I never really thought of sacrifice as something bad, though. You know, sacrifice is. Uh, I don't know. It's a, to me, it's a necessity, man, and. Uh, yeah, man, it's just cool. It's just cool to, to be able to see, like, when I was going to school, you know, I, you know, would work all day and then get out and then work till, or go to school till, like, 10. And it was just weird to me that, like, everyone was like, oh, man, how do you, how are you doing that? Or, like, that's crazy. And then now, you know, with this painting gig, it's like, you know, I get out of work and I go paint, you know, until, like, 10 or 11. But, man, I don't know what it is. If, to me, it's just like, a, it, it, it's like kind of like adrenaline, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I doing so before when i was like using i got adrenaline from doing stuff that other people were kind of like damn like what like drinking during the day like what the it's it's fucking 10 a.m you know like what are you doing but but so now it's it's the same thing it's just it's just in a different form it's just and and i I understand that it can get unhealthy you know what i'm saying that's why like with this painting gig i'm glad that it's finally over like it was just a three month it's over (laughs) yeah i'm pretty sure it's over he hasn't hit me up yet so been a good three months, fucking good mon- amount of money, but now I'm about to get killed in taxes because I didn't really... Oh, shit. I wasn't that responsible. I have some money fucker, saved up, dude. but I'm about to get killed in taxes, bro. But hey, for anyone listening, IRS, if you're listening, man, I'm paying them. I'm paying taxes, so I'm a you taxpayer. Paying by selling your ass in high <laughs> lift. That's what it takes. So it's, it's good, though, man. It, it feels good to to know that I'm, I'm doing what I need to do for myself and my family. And yeah. And, uh, yeah, man, I'm, I'm excited. Also, I'd like to say that I did miss the fireworks and I missed three consecutive weeks of riding the jet ski Ooh. because I wanted to sacrifice my own personal get needs em. to, uh, get this stuff done at this house here so we can get moved in and, and, uh, get there's still fuck a lot of work to do. So I did finally take a break though after like. This week I was like, you know what? I want to buy a fucking Xbox. Dude. Oh, I now we're some. talking. Call Wait, didn't Duty you have 4. one? No, what, what I was using playing? her brother's uh, oh, PlayStation, okay, okay. but he took it. You know, we we. Uh, you got live? Yeah, for real. Dude, I went <laughs> oh, in, dude. dude, you're done. I for. called Marty. I was like, Mart, he's got we're it. Gonna freaking yeah, we're gonna get on there. What's his What's his gamer tag? It's like I don't know, Morton. <laughs> 27, what, what's your what's your what's your gamer tag? For some reason, it it auto named me. Uh, oh yeah, you got like change. Slinky fucking <laughs> something. I was like, what the? 
Yeah, I'm about to. I'm it's, a noob. But. So, you, uh, so you got it. All right, I'm about to get it then. I got that free trial, like three month free trial that came with Xbox. What do you got, dude? What game? I got FIFA. That's all I got. <laughs> FIFA? I ain't playing no FIFA. I got FIFA, dude. bro. You got get, Call of Duty? Get Black Ops 4. All right, well, Drew, why don't you drop that freaking Nimbus cloud, bro? <laughs> Oh, she hates that noise. Yo, again, shout out. We said it in the in the beginning, but shout out again to D Square Media. You know, they do take care of us. They sponsor us. They do. They redid our website. Um, check that out. www.theeverydayhustleshow.com. Um, yeah, if you have you know any business needs, small business, big business, you need to redo your website. You need a new website. Anything, business cards, anything like that. Um, hit them up. Let them know you heard heard from us and you get 10% off everything forever until you die or... What if I were to open a a pornography website? Hey, they got you, bro. Hey, no no discrimination, no uh, judgment, whatever you need. What if it was called I Jerk, You Jerk, We Jerk? (laughs) Hey, check it. See if they have the, 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 what is it, the site on GoDaddy. See if they have it. Check that out. That's pretty good, actually. Yeah, thank you guys again for listening to another episode. And uh, this is 80, so check it out for next week. Motherfucking don't die. Don't die.